everybody, it's Kathy from Always in Stitches. Have I got an exciting, exciting thing to show you. So we're in front of our building. Our store is right there, right, right there. Banter's Meats is right there. But in between, we have the new Always Next Door Event Center. Is this awesome? Come on in, let me show you what we got. Here? Right behind you. You're right behind me, okay. Don't get hit by the door. So we've got a really fun space for you guys to come hang out. Come on in. So it's still a little under construction. So come on in. We, these are tables and we've got chairs um, being set up and it's a big open room. But look how big this space is. Isn't this awesome? Um, we have our first retreat happening this weekend. So by the time you're watching this, it will have started. We're gonna have 30 people come and they're gonna have machines and they're gonna have uh, stitching, knitting, crochet, whatever they wanna do, whatever vibe feels good for them in this amazing space. And we have a kitchen. Come on, let me show you the kitchen. Cause you know, we know how much fun kitchens are. But if you're having a group of people, you wanna have a place to have your snacks and your food and things. So we've got a full kitchen attached right here. And there's still paint, there's still paint things sitting there. I mean, this is so new, folks. We haven't even got it really cleaned up yet. But we will before Saturday. So we've got a full kitchen, stove, microwave, refrigerator, sink. Um, so if you have your group here and you want to have snacks, you've got plenty of room to put that together. Um, everything you need to do it. Not a dishwasher. So I would suggest paper plates. <laughs> Unless you want to wash dishes. But, I mean, just look out there through there how much room you've got. Um, great, great, great open space. Plenty of plug-ins. We're thinking if you want to use this for either uh, bridal showers, wedding showers, family reunions, uh, breakfast with Santa scheduling. We've got a reunion of a high school group coming. Um, just, you know, whatever you need a big event space for. And here's the cool part. Let me show you one more thing. So you just go right through this door here, right through there is always in stitches. And we can have this open or closed, whatever works for you. And what that means is if you have a group come that are stitchers, they've got a place to go shop. Isn't that great? So I'm stitching, I'm stitching, oh no, I forgot my, what do you forget Peter when you go to a retreat? My sewing machine. My sewing machine. <laughs> Yeah, you can borrow one of our sewing machines. We do that for free um, if you're using it in, this, in the facility, as long as we know you're using it. Um, we have, of course, all our supplies are over there, but what a great opportunity um, for you to be able to have that event. So if you have thought, gosh, I need to kind of figure out where am I going to bring all my 20 other quilting friends to hang out for the day, and where can I do that economically? This is the place. Quilting, cross stitch, wool embroidery, whatever your club or thrill is. Yeah. Knitting, spinning, hand spinning. Well, or even painting. Uh, what about Zumba? Say you got somebody who wants to do a Zumba class. You could do a Zumba class in here. We've got tables and chairs. Capacity. Let me just tell you numbers. So if you've got people seated at tables, it's going to be without machines and all that kind of stuff. Capacity is going to be 70 people. If you've got... Um, if you want to do like rows of seats, then you're talking a capacity of 150 people. Um, we currently have available not quite that many chairs, but we can, if you need to work things out, we'll have to work out how we get that enough chairs for here for you. But um, as far as tables go, we've got tables and things like that. So contact me. Uh, info, I-N-F-O at alwaysandstitches1.com is the email that belongs to this facility as far as getting information about pricing and uh, when it's available. I'm amazed. This has only been out just maybe a month or two and we've already got a lot of bookings. So if you're interested in, in having a, a safe space that you can come to and use, um, it's available. And if you want to use it for a couple days, that's available too. Yoga retreat. Yoga retreat. Yeah. Well, it's a sleep at home retreat. So let me, let me clarify, there's no place here to sleep. <laughs> and, and you can't spend the night over here, but you can have it available to your group. The one retreat we're doing this weekend, that's a Friday and Saturday night, we're calling it a sleep at home retreat. Frankly, I like that. I, I would rather sleep in my own bed than go sleep in a, you know, 
someplace that's not my own bed. So um, I think this is really fun. We've got 30 people coming to that. We're going to see how that fits in this room. It might be we offer it again and we do more people, um, or we may do a little less. Just depends. There's also a knit in coming November, I say November 22nd. They're going to be over here too. Um, we've got some handy quilter events going to be happening in this facility and things like that. So here it is. Ta-da! I've been teasing about it a little bit and it's a little premature to show it to you because we don't have it kind of set up and everything, but we're in the process of doing that because our first event happens Friday. So we want to be ready for that. So we'll get some pictures Friday when the event's going on so you can see how the facility kind of plays out with people in it. But uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a great retreat. So be watching if you're wanting to attend a retreat. We're going to offer those that are free form. But if you want to form your own, make it happen. I mean, this video goes all over. Let's say you live in Washington State. And you're like, gosh, I've been wanting to go to Always in Stitches. Bring a group of 20 friends. Rent this room. You could have it for the whole day. You could shop. You can see our beautiful downtown. Noblesville has a beautiful downtown square with lots of neat little restaurants. And you can walk around down there. There's all kinds of fun stuff going on there during the weekends. Um, we've got some local interesting historical museums and things like that. So, And we're just north of Indianapolis, about 30 miles. So um, this could be a good destination for you if you're looking for a retreat center. I really hope you'll let us help you out with that if you want. So this is it. Always Next Door Retreat Center. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We hope you come see us soon. And now we've shown you that, we're going to go next door and look at fabric and yarn and machines. Okay, can I just tell you how excited I am? Why? Because Tula's here. Y'all know I'm a big Tula fan. Where's she at? Here. Right here. Oh, her fabric's here. Well, yeah. Gosh, if Tula was really here, it'd be, it'd be so fangirl. It'd be ugly. I'd be so if ugly. she came into shop, what would you do? She's like, oh, I need some fabric. I would be like, I'll give you anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've actually, the cool part is I have met her in person. I was at a retreat a few years ago and she was there. And can I tell you, she was the nicest, most down to earth, very normal, very patient with people who are goo goo gaga over her. And she just sat and did her English paper piecing and just had a grand old time and relaxed, you know, just like normal people, which why wouldn't she? But for some reason, we always think those people that we have, we respect that much are kind of away. You know, you, they're untouchable, but she's not. She's, she's very, very, very personable. So it was a real treat to get to do that. And I think that's probably when I became her biggest fan because she really talked about her vision for how she designs fabric. And I was most impressed with her logic behind it, that it really does have um, a quilter's eye. So many times our designers are come from fabric from come from companies or from areas where they don't have that graphic design knowledge. She has such a great eye because she has the graphic artist uh, knowledge, but she is a quilter. And those two things combined make her an outstanding fabric designer because she really knows how to pick our large, medium, and small, our light, medium, and dark. Um, the value on her fabric really translates beautifully into quilting because she gives you all those options to play with. And I think sometimes our designers who aren't necessarily quilters, who are just graphic designers, they don't conceptualize what it takes for us to put a quilt together and have the right fabrics and colors and patterns to work with. So not that she needs my endorsement, but I love Tula and her artistic design and eye for color. And in this line, she really did outdo herself. Uh, <clears throat> her previous lines almost all the time contain animals and if you, there's a little blurb about this particular line and what she said was one of her favorite parts of working in the fabric lines is doing the flowers and most of her animals are set in flowers but this fabric line is all flowers so those of you who are maybe like I don't really care to have a raccoon or an owl or a snake on my fabric how about some beautiful dahlias is this just look at the this is the part I'm talking about, this graphic design that she does in her fabric. And this repeat, you'll know if you do like a stack and whack, if you're doing English paper piecing, these really translate beautifully. Um, and just look how pretty that is. It's just pow, pow. Now, there's a little bit of neon in these. If you'll notice, like in the center of this flower, it's that bright neon green like in this. Um, or even this hot pink kind of translates into some of this in here. So 
she's done some things to bring a little bit of neon. So if you have that previous line that had the neon in it, you're going to still blend. But uh, that piece is just yummy. Look at this one. Okay, here's pansies. She's picked all my favorite flowers. Look at these pansies. And again, see this kind of houndstooth sort of thing going on in the background like that? That's a fabric she has had previously. So this houndstooth shape does a nice job. Love that. And then these raindrops. See the raindrops here? See the little checkers and the dots and things? This is her companion pieces. And this houndstooth is mirrored in this larger houndstooth in the background. So that's what I'm saying. Her fabric, she does such a nice job of giving us the large houndstooth. There's the little houndstooth, you know. Um, she's just, I, her brain is just amazing. And here we are. That's, I'm going to say a cabbage. Or maybe it's a peony. Kind of looks like a peony. And then, see, here's the checkerboard background. There it is. And then the, that'll match with these. So if you want to pull the checkerboard out. There's the checkerboard right there on the, on the poppy, or on the petal of the flower right there. So that's cool. That's what makes them blend. I know sometimes people look at these colors and like, well, they just don't go together. Well, they do by pattern. Look at this one. Here it is. That's that same flower in a different colorway. They're not really directional. This one's going that way. This one's going that way. So you don't have to worry too much about direction. See, that one's kind of going at this direction. So she's somewhat directional, but not terribly obtuse that way. Look at this one. Oh, that's just big. How pretty that is. That's a little, there's a tiger lily. I have no idea what that is. Very pretty. And see, that's going to blend in with these. Her geometrics, you know, that sometimes don't get as much attention. I love these two. This teal with this purple, too. These are awesome. Great basics to have. These, these are going to be your basics up here. Um, here's, again, the pansy print with a teal background and kind of a pink. So she typically has like a light and a dark colorway, which sounds funny in these bright colors to say light and dark. But there was, one's a little darker, one's a little lighter. Look how pretty that. Okay, so here's my point. See these little dots in here on these flowers? So we've had lines that were just dots from hers, but look what she did. I just wanna show you how this works together. So here we have the same colors. Look, it's the pink dot and there's the pink dot. So she's, she's blending this fabric with that fabric in a way that doesn't really anger your eye. It's not overwhelming. It's nice and tiny. And I'm pretty sure those are poppies. Poppies will make you sleep. So here they are. That, that poppy line, there's a teal, there's a hot pink, there's a lavender, and kind of a soft coral. Here we are again now with our dahlias in purple with green. Look at that. Mmm. That is beautiful. How those two play off of each other. I love those colors. And here's that hot, see that hot neon orange right there? So I'm going to go with that. That's going to be your clue on what to put with that. And look how that just, those three right there just pop together. <sighs> yes, we will do a fat quarter bundle if you would like a fat quarter bundle. If you want a half yard bundle, give orders at Always and Stitches 1. Dot com shoot them an email that will be Deborah you'll be working with in that department she'll get you fixed up so you will have what you need um, and then the other part and this is Peter's favorite part is this why do you like these Peter tell them what's so good about them the finish of the cotton the way it's woven it's a satin finish so Peter is my fiber guy he's because he's such a, a great knitter and because he's worked in textiles as long as he has, he understands fabric better than I do. And so when you when you get a piece of fabric and he's like, oh, that's nice fabric, he's always right. Because it has it a is. sheen to it because of the way it's woven. Yeah, okay. That's the stair because it's the way it's woven. But it's just, it's it's silky. It's it's like butter. So this makes is a, the best backings, though. I agree. Oh man, when it's laying against your skin, it's just it's awesome. It's so silky. It is so silky. So these are uh, ooh, let me tell you, 108. One oh, they're 108 wide. Okay, we do tear our backs. We do not cut them. So that means you're going to get a true squared back when you get it. Um, so that's 108 there, and then here it is in the green orange the uh, your warm colors that's your cool colors and that'd be your warm colors isn't that pretty mm. so pretty <laughs> now but wait 
there's more. Tula has done ribbon for a long time, and we don't always get the ribbon to go with her project, but this is the designer ribbon. So this is your warm colorway, this is your cool colorway. Um, wait, said that backwards. Well, yeah, this is your warm, this is your cool. The way she blends her colors is kind of hard to choose. But those are the designer ribbons. These are great to do, if you're making bags, they're fun for that. If you're doing a quilt, you can use it as a, a trim around your label. You can put it around your binding. Um, lots of fun things to do with ribbons. And then the piece I'm most excited about, and those are awesome, but look at these. This is her webbing, and look what it matches. Da, 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 da. So if you want the webbing, you can also make a bag. And I think a lot of people tend to make bags out of Tula stuff. It just it translates well. This is going to translate beautifully to bags. So if you're looking for webbing, um, I wouldn't hesitate one whit to buy several yards of this because it's going to go far. So there you have it. That's Tula. And we're excited to have her in the house, even if it's not live. But if you're ever in Indiana, Tula, we would love to see you. <laughs> but tell me first, because it would be like, Whoa, I'd, have, I'd have like a girl moment, you know, total meltdown. Okay. Taylor has nothing on Tula as far as I'm concerned. Tula's the girl. Okay, that's it for fabric. I've got to chat with some of our staff about something for a minute, and then we're going to come back and finish this video. Hang in there. All right, so we'll... Hey guys, it's Kathy from Always and Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana, and I'm here in the sewing department, my favorite department, and I'm just here to show you we got a new serger in. Um, we are a quilting store, but we do a lot more than just quilting. We have um, actually two sergers right now. We have the brand new one, it's called Mylock 454D, and then we also have the air threader, which is next to it. It's the, the creme de la creme. It is more expensive. Um, but it has more bells and whistles. So you pay for the bells and whistles, as you know. Um, this one is a great serger, though. Um, as far as sergers go, it is easier to thread than most. That's my biggest hang-up with sergers. And Cappy, the sewing ma or the manager of the store, when she teaches the serger, she cuts the threads and makes you re-thread your serger. Instead of tying it off like I like to do, I like to tie it off and pull it through to make it easier. She cuts it off and says, okay, thread it. Well, this one's not so bad, and I've had to watch videos to know how to do it, but it has the color chart and the path, which makes it a lot easier. What is a serger good for? Oh my gosh, I don't have one. I really, really kind of want one. I want to venture more into clothing. Um, you can quilt with a serger. I went to Genome Institute, and we actually made quilt blocks with a serger, and it, just the seams are differently on the other side. The serger actually does an overcast stitch if you look at your, your stitch. Um, but it also has a blade to cut it, so it seals, it cuts and seals at the same time. I did an incredible vest out of our woven flannel, and I just put it over top of a cream, just outfit that I had, wool outfit. But the vest itself was just two cuts. I just made two cuts, and then I just surged around the edges. It took me probably 10 minutes to finish on a serger. So sergers are so fast, and they're so efficient. Um, but this one is the brand new baby, and the price range is great. And they also, on top of having a great price range, it also, um, we have the holiday sale. Our holiday sales are out right now. Um, Janome's holiday sales, not ours. But we are honoring all the holiday sale prices, and this one actually is less money than what we had it priced at. So we will honor that as well. So come on in, check out the sergers. Um, we're getting ready to have a retreat in our retreat center, and we're going to have a serger over there. That way you guys can try them out. So I hope you have a great day. It's absolutely gorgeous outside. Enjoy your Monday. So I'm in the wides area, which works for a wide person like me. Um, and me. <laughs> well, you're tall. <laughs> I, that's my problem. If I was as tall as you, I'd be just perfectly right weight, you know. I've always said I'm just too short. I'm not too fat. Um, okay, but we're in the wides department. Why do you buy wides instead of regular with fabric? They are the dream. Because if you've done a 90 by 90 quilt, you're going to have to piece your fabric to make the back. Boo. Yeah, Peter's shaking his head. Boo. That's a blab. <laughs> But it's just not fun because it's a big long seam and it tends to wobble and it's not always straight and when the long armor puts it on the machine it tends to shit blip. So we like wide backs. So let me show you the wide back. This just came in. The fabric line is called Essence. This is by Figo. So Figo. 
Yeah, because the sales rep was in and I was ordering fabric and I'm, I kept saying Figo. And he goes, no, 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 it's Figo. I said, oh, like Figaro, Figaro, because I watch cartoons. That's all I know about opera. Um, <laughs> is what Bugs Bunny taught me. But this goes with that line. So if you were looking at that fabric, um, this is the Figo. I actually made a shirt out of this. I, if I had my shirt on today, I could show you the shirt against it because it's the exact same fabric. So this is a new wide back. I think this is going to go really well with lots of things because of the grays and the navies. Here's another new wide back. This is by P&B Elizabeth. That's really pretty. Nice beige tone. We try to get as many different colors as we can in, in uh, wide backs. This is also by P&B called Elizabeth. And this one is a Jacobian. Another one that's in a red. So you've got that same one. This is red. This is beige. And then we got several of these. These are from the P&B Fluidity line. And so that we've got a beige, a black, a navy, kind of an aqua, pale grayish aqua. This looks like the countertops in my house. And then this is um, a real pretty teal. So try to get a range of colors. Um, we've also, of course, got all our other wide backs that we keep in stock. We have your basic colors. We try to keep a little bit of every color because, you know, invariably the color you're looking for is the color I don't have. I know I just ordered some new green. Um, that'll be coming very quickly and some of the wide backs are featured with the fabrics they go with so if you're in the wide back department and you're like oh wait a minute but I'm looking for it to go with this fabric you might find the wide back in another area of the store so don't hesitate to ask and then of course you know I'm always a big fan of minky for wide back as well um, and I do have some wide back flannels coming but it's not until I think November well it is November December maybe end of December something like that so we try to keep a variety. Your basic whites and beiges are always good. Simple, easy solution when you can't figure it out. And then all the other ones. So I hope you're shopping our wide backs if you're curious about using them do because they're lovely. You'll Once you use a wide back, you'll never want to sew two pieces of fabric together to make a wide back again. I will warn you, we tear our fabric when we do our wide backs in the cotton. Um, and that's because you get a nice straight of grain. If you're a um, long arm person, uh, if you're taking it to a long arm person, or even if you're quilting it yourself, when you tear that fabric, it tears it on the grain and it makes it nice and straight. When we do that, we give you extra for free. So let's say you order two and a half yards of a wide back, then we're going to do more like two and three fourths, just to give you enough so for shrinkage and making sure you square it up, because it's really important to square up those quilts. Um, if you shrink your wide backs, which I usually do, what you want to do is on the corner of that great big piece of fabric, just snip it on each of the four corners, just like about a three quarter inch triangle out of the corner of your fabric. That prevents those strings from being so bad on your quilt when you wash it. Because when you wash a wide back, you can have a lot of strings come down and make it kind of messy. So that's your little tip for the day. Um, okay, so I talked about this. I got to show you. This is kind of fun. I feel like a Muppet. Do I look like a Muppet? I, could, I can do the stair thing, right? <laughs> and look what happens. Where'd you go? Boop. <laughs> Boop. The party's fun. So Kayla, who we love, these are the samples for her, a couple of her Christmas projects. This Christmas tree is so ding dong dang cute. I can't even tell you how adorable <laughs> this little Christmas tree is. The little star on top and little flocking around it. I love it. And then this little bit, we haven't figured out exactly what's on his head. Oh, I know what it is. Hello. It's the, it's from the, it's from the Grinch. It's probably branding that we can't identify. It's the Grinch. You know, when the Grinch, this dog ties the antler on his head oh. to look like a, Deer, a reindeer. Reindeer. Oh okay. my gosh. Okay, got it. That's awesome. It, so we've been looking at him going, is it a reindeer? Is it a dog? I'm like, well, it says it's a dog. It has to be a dog. That's it. It's the Grinch. It's the Grinch dog that ties the rain. The See how bad you want this. You want this tree with this dog to put under your Christmas tree. So if you're a crocheter, come take a class with Kayla. She does a beautiful job of really being patient and walking you through this process. There is some things you need to know, so when you sign up, go to our website and look at what it says about how to sign up for her class. There's a pattern we can't carry because the distributor of the pattern, or the designer of the pattern, only sells it direct. So you're going to have to um, work directly with them to get your pattern before you come to class. But we do have all the yarn. Um, and if this sample disappears, I don't know who took it. 
I'm just telling you right now. I don't know. Who well, if you're it. taking the tree, I'm taking the dog. <laughs> <laughs> this did look at all like your dogs. My dog has floppy ears. Well, it has floppy ears. But not that floppy, though. Not that floppy. Yeah, not quite that floppy. Okay, so these are really, 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 really fun. I wouldn't want you to miss out on those. And then, um, you know, fabric isn't coming in as quick because this time of year we slow down a little bit because we're getting into the end of the year. And frankly, I don't want so much in here. My inventory is over the top. But I have a treat for you. I'm going to show. Let's step over here to this cutting table and we'll show you what's coming. So I sat down last week met with two different fabric reps and um, the Moda company which a lot of you are very familiar with the Moda company when we order fabric from them they give us in advance charm squares for us to make up samples so I'm going to show you some of the fabric that will be coming now most of this isn't coming until e April May June of next year but let's just take a look so this is Frivolity by Sweetwater Road Designs and I'm gonna fan through here. This is kind of hard because it's just a charm pack, so you don't see all the piece, but look how pretty that is. <gasps> I love that peachy coral with that green. That's really pretty. Fun, fun, fun. There you go. Those are really pretty. So, Moda Frivolity. If you're gonna be looking for that when it comes out, we'll have it. This one, this is the Create Joy Project. We absolutely love this designer. She's the sweetest soul. She is a watercolorist by uh, original trade, but she's walked into the quilting industry and just taken it by storm. We have been able to carry several of her lines along the way. Let's see if I can move that down just a little bit to get a little better fan. Okay, here we go. So these always have... Every, anything we got in of hers sells out so so fast. Um, look at that one. Mm. She, it, it has a strong watercolor painting is what it makes me think of. But um, great variety, great colors, very tranquil. Some good basics. She has good basics in there. Um, I love it. So this is going to be a fun one to have. Look at that check. That's a great check. Checks are, checks are big. You're going to see this kind of, it's not really a plaid, it's a check. Makes me want to play chess, I guess. So, that one's called Wanderlust by Create Joy. This one is called Berry Pine by Lola Batik, or Lella Batik. We've had a lot of their fabric in here, and you guys have just ate it up. This will be a Christmas line. It's Christmas-ish. I think we could get away with using it for other things. Now, they've got their classic little poppy... Kind of looking flower. We'll get across one here. See these little flowers? That's kind of their their vibe. They always have good dots, too. We've got their dot line in here right now. Little berries. So this is a nice... It's it's Christmas, but it's not so overtly Christmas that you couldn't use it, you know, other times, depending on which fabric you picked. This one is called Old World Yuletide. So, you know, this ain't going to come in until May or June of 2025. I can't believe I'm showing you this this early. But put it on your list of things you want to buy. And what I do is put a reminder in your cell phone so that when the month comes in May or June, oh yeah, I wanted to see that particular line at Always in Stitches. And watch our What's New videos. We'll have them, of course, in there. That one was stunning. Okay, that. You know what to do with that, Peter? English paper, please. Yes! Yes, yes, yes. And that, that would even do your eensy teensy weensy hexies that make me crazy. Oh, you drive me crazy. How little is that? Look, how, look at those little ones. Wouldn't that be beautiful in it? English paper piece part. Mm, mm, mm. So Old World Yuletide, and this is by Stephanie Slowinski. Fancy that design. She's kind of a new designer with them. Here's another one, Jessica Rogo. Another very new design called Rainier. There's kind of a, a floral, um, earthy tone thing going on in the industry. It's kind of fun when I order fabric to see the trend. And I would say this colorway is the trend for next year. It's very pastel earth tones. Um, which I'm liking. I'm thinking they're pretty. That's really pretty. Looks like a ginkgo leaf, sort of. Maybe it's a flower. I don't know. Subjective to your ideas. So this is fun. Oh, there's a good one. Oh, oh yeah, and this, this reminds me. I bought this in uh, Canvas. So there's going to be some Canvas available uh, yes. with this. And I think this color in Canvas, too. So bags, if you want to do bags or, you know, handles for bags, whatever. So that's fun. And then my favorite gal, good old Debbie Maddie. Um, she does the Shibori dyeing, which, you know, I'm a big fan of shibori dyeing. So these lines are going to blend with any of that navy shibori fabric that you've got before. Um, she does 
all kinds of retreats all over the United States. If you ever get a chance to take one of her classes, don't miss it. It's She's an amazing, amazing, talented lady. She writes great patterns, too. So this is going to be very muted. This is, this is that tonal thing that's going big. And then these two, now I don't want you to be confused, because... So here's, here's the story. A lot of times fabrics will have 42, which is what's in here, 42 color, 42 prints in one l line. That's more than I want to buy. Um, well, actually, most of the time, 25, 30, depends. Every line has a different number. But with this line, instead of buying everything in green and everything in this kind of eggplant color, we kind of mixed it up. So you're going to have an eggplant with the green combination come in of you know about 10 or 12 bolts from each line so it's going to be really fun I think there'll be some great opportunity to do some blending and some fun stuff with that so that one's called three sisters vintage linens lavender fields and meadow greens so there you go those none of these that I just showed you are going to be available don't ask they're not coming until later if, though, you're interested in them, you could shoot an email to orders at alwaysinstitches1.com and say, hey, I saw on the, on the YouTube video this Rainier from the Moda Company, and Cappy said it's coming in 2025. Put me on the list. I'd like to have some. And then when it comes in, we'll give you a call. Make it happen. Um, okay. That was fun. But you know what we haven't done for a really long time, Peter? The weather. The weather. Oh, we haven't done the weather. That's a good point. So tell me about the weather today. It's sunny. It's sunny. And what did you get to wear today because of the temperature? A vest. A vest. And he's going to have to show you a picture. Yeah, I, right? Yes. You're working on it Saturday. Peter won't toot his own horn, so I'm going to toot for him. He is an incredible knitter. We've got a knitting group that meets on Saturday mornings with him. It's a very casual, just sit around, chit-chat kind of thing. It's not a paid event. It's not a teaching class. It's a show social time. At the same time, he's kind of moderating that event. He's also working on our sales force, so he's just kind of there to make sure y'all don't hurt each other while you've got those needles in your hand. But um, anyway, that group meets, and he's been working on his sweaters. He's got one sweater done that I hope you post a picture of because it is gorgeous. He's got a sweater on today, equally gorgeous, and he's got a third one in work. It's just, it's hard to work with someone who's so talented, but... Thanks. I won't toot his horn, but I will. Yeah. He's Thanks, very, Cappy. Very, very, very good knitter. We were talking a little earlier that when God was passing out abilities, he definitely gave Peter the knitting ability. So, But if you're a knitter and you would like to have this bag, isn't this fun? Yeah, I want that bag. Well, you don't qualify. The, you are the winner employee. may not get it. The winner may not get it. Okay. So this is a really cool bag. When I met with the sales rep, he gave us this bag. Look at the fun little kitty cat on the back. We're going into Christmas. This would be a great bag just to, you know, haul around for Christmas time and deliver things with. We're going to give it away because we haven't given anything away for a while. So here's what I want. Here's I'm, This is shameless. I want to know what's your favorite Christmas cookie. It's not even Christmas yet. Should we do Thanksgiving first? Okay, let's talk about things. But it's a Christmas bag. It's a conundrum. It's fine. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll do Christmas. Let's do Christmas cookie because that's what I said. We'll do a Thanksgiving thing when we get closer to Thanksgiving. But I want you to say in the comments, what's your favorite Christmas cookie? And we might have to have recipes. <laughs> I'm just telling you, if it turns out like we hear some really good ones. One of our customers, and I, her name has escaped me, and I apologize because the one who brings in the maple crescent kind of cookies, who is that? And they are so good. They're these, they're these little cookies with like a maple cream on them. And when they come in, it's like everybody tells the whole staff they're here. And shame on me for not knowing her name. But Is we, it Marianne? It might be. Marianne Wetterer? No. The other Marianne. The other Anne. The other, well, whoever it is brings us those cookies. We love cookies. We, we can easily be bribed. I know who it is. But I, I do just too. Can't I think can see her face. The last name is on the tip of my tongue. See, okay, we only have like 8,000 people in our registered database. But uh, now, Mary Wetterer's husband, Tom, he bakes really he, awesome cookies. He makes cookies, He too. baked cookies last year for us. Yeah. They so were good. The holidays are coming. Man. And it is good to bribe the, the workers of Always and Stitches because we love stuff. But that won't get you this. Well, it might. I don't know. If you brought them in in person instead of commented, would that get them a bag, too? I don't know. You got the bag. I got the bag. I got one. I got one. So we'll give it to a person on YouTube. That's only fair. We showed it on YouTube. But those people watch our YouTube channel. A lot of our customers they come do. in and watch they it. Do. So um, comment your favorite cookie, and then the next week we'll give this bag away to somebody. So 
I think I've yammered enough today. I hope wherever you are, you're having a beautiful stitchy day. I'm going to hold Peter to task to post the pictures of all his sweater vests that he's building up and making with knitting because they are really, really pretty. And uh, whatever you're doing, I hope you're having fun. I hope it's perfect weather where you are and that you're having a happy good day. We're going to be having a happy good day. If you're not, come visit with us. We'll give you a happy good day. That's what we do in here. So happy stitching.